Okay. There we go. Okay, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so today I'm just going to uh, take you through uh, the UQ Employability Award uh, ePortfolio um, and how to use it and how to add in content uh, and then how to submit your work through uh, for it to be reviewed. So basically, if you're not familiar with what an ePortfolio is um, and what um, the university is using it for. So basically the portfolio is a uh, space where you can collect and organize um, experiences throughout your studies. Uh, you can then also do uh, reflecting on what you've learnt, what skills you've acquired um, and reflect on your um, growth as a person. Um, the ePortfolio also has areas for collaboration and also of tracking progress. So in some programs throughout the university, they track uh, skills. So um, vet science, for instance, has a whole heap of vet, vet science skills that they have to achieve across their program. So the students can track their progress over time against those skills. Um, and then finally, you have the My Portfolio section where you can actually create your own personalized portfolios of work, which you can then use to then market yourself to employers by sharing your content with them. Um, so basically today, we're just going to uh, go through um, the process of accessing the UQ Employability Award portfolio um, and then go through and how you can add content in. So basically to access the portfolio, what you'll need to do is log into learn.uq. So um, if you haven't already, please go ahead and access um, blackboard learn.uq um, and we'll start from there. So to initially create your portfolio for the UQ Employability Award, you will need to locate on the uh, welcome screen there is a link that is called My ePortfolio Account Setup. It may be located in a few different places on your screen. It may be on the left-hand side of your screen underneath the tools section, or you may find it at the very bottom of your uh, My Courses and My Announcements section, which is in the middle of the screen. Um, it is different for everybody, so um, just scroll around the screen until you can find the link that says My ePortfolio Account Setup. When you click on that link, it will uh, take you to a self-enrollment screen where you will need to hit the submit button so that it will enroll you in the course. Once you hit that submit button, hit OK, and it will take you into a landing screen for My ePortfolio. On this screen, there is a couple of different links um, which will take you through and set up your portfolios. So uh, the one that we are interested in today is located at the bottom and it's called the, My, uh, the UQ Employability Award Account Setup. So basically you will only need to click on this link once each calendar year from the day you first click on it. So your license for the ePortfolio will last from one year from today when you click on that link. So after that year, if you're still a student here at the university, you'll need to then go back into this site and you'll click on that again and it will renew your account for another year. After you've finished studying at the university, you will retain access to your portfolio. So basically what happens is once your calendar year expires, your account will move over into an alumni account where you will then retain read-only access to all the content you've put into your portfolio for a period of four years. After that four-year time frame, the vendor will then archive your um, portfolio and all its data into permanent storage. Um, if you do wish to continue using the portfolio in its full capacity, um, you can choose to then pay a subscription fee um, and continue to use it in its full capacity after you have finished being a student. But while you are a student here at the university, we will pay for your license in costs. So you can go ahead and you can click on the uh, UQ Employability Award Account Setup link. 
It will then launch a new tab where it will take you into the portfolio. Now, if you are a first time user, you will need to accept the user agreement uh, for the portfolio. Um, scroll to the bottom, there's a little checkbox that says, I agree, um, and then there's an accept button. Um, I can assure you that the legal agreement has been read by many of the university's lawyers, as well as uh, 500 uh, first year law students that were made to read it word for word. Um, so it has been read multiple times by lots of people. So what it will do is once you've clicked on that link, it will take you straight into the portfolio for the UQ Employability Award. Now, before we go further, I'm just going to um, show you how you can actually um, continue to get access the um, Employability Award portfolio once your account has been set up because you won't um, basically each month uh, we go through and we remove students from the account setup um, course so that um, it doesn't slow the system down. So I'm just going to close uh, my tab. Uh, oops, I'm just going to go back to Blackboard. So from the welcome screen on Blackboard, once you've used the My Portfolio account setup, you'll notice that above it, there is a link that says My Portfolio you will be able to click onto that link and it will take you to the single sign-on screen for the e-portfolio. That is how you'll be able to continue to access the portfolio once this session's been completed. So you just click onto that and it will take you through to a screen and it will ask you to log in. So if you, once you uh, do go through the My e-portfolio uh, link and sign in, you will land on the dashboard of your portfolio. So to navigate into the UQ Employability Award, you go over to the left hand side and there's a section that says menu. You click on that menu, you go into my coursework. And then in here you'll find the, uh, your UQ Employability Award portfolio. So basically you locate that you left click on it and then you can go into edit portfolio and that will then take you into the uh, UQ employability award portfolio. So that is how you gain access to the employability award. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Sarah for a minute so she can give a bit of an expl explanation about what uh, content you will need to look at adding uh, for the different sections. Thank you. Okay, so um, how many of you here have actually had a look at the guide, the application guide yet online? Yeah, a couple? Great. So strongly suggest that you have a look at the application guide because that's going to step through not only what Nathan's just gone through, but also the, the exact content that we're looking for in your application because that's where you're really going to be able to demonstrate to us what you've gained from the award experience. So um, there's three parts. You've got the about me section, which is basically just a really nice way of, of putting a profile of yourself out there. That can be either a written profile with a, a nice profile pitch, uh, picture. Otherwise, it can be a video upload, which we'll show you shortly um, one example of one that we've got from a student. So that's totally up to you what you want to do in that part. The second part you'll see is the um, resume. So again, you can build your resume within the ePortfolio program from scratch or you can upload your own um, in whichever format you may have it. So that one's quite straightforward. The third part, um, and in the resume, make sure that you're actually putting all of the amazing stuff that you've done during the award. Um, so employers can see that going forward as well. In the third part, it's the statement of claims. So that's where you can really start to reflect on the, all the experiences as a whole um, and pick out the main skills and attributes that maybe were reoccurring throughout all of your experiences because that's where your real strengths lie. And that's the opportunity for you to write a statement of claim about each of those. So there's four statements of claims. Um, in again, the, the resource guide, it will tell you exactly what we're looking for and what we need you to talk about in those sections. Um, and they're statements that you can actually use going forward with different applications. You can grab bits and pieces of it for ongoing applications and a lot of government Organisations will ask you to write statements of claims now in their recruitment process. So it's really good practice for you. 
um, for those types of roles as well. Um, we'll go into a little bit more about how you'll be assessed and what we're exactly looking for um, in the assessment part with Nathan very shortly. Okay, I'll pass it back. Okay, so hopefully you've all managed to make it through onto the uh, UQ Employability Award uh, page. So first thing I'm going to do is take you um, through each of the different pages um, and what is on each of the pages. So we are going to start with the About Me page. So if you are sitting there and you're um, sitting what we call the table of contents. So this view that I'm currently in at the moment is what is called the table of contents view. And each of the sections in the table of contents is a page. So we are going to go onto the About Me page. So all you have to do is click on that About Me page and you'll be taken into that page. Now, this is the top level page for the Employability Award. This is also the page in which you need to return to to submit your work for marking or for review, I should say. It's probably not really marking, but it's the page that you go to so that your um, work can be reviewed. So over on the left hand, uh, sorry, right hand side of the screen, you'll see that there are two assessment instruments attached. One is called the UQ Employability Award ePortfolio and the other is the Employability Award Interview. So you can have a look at what the assessment instrument is and what you'll be um, what criteria you'll be marked on by simply left clicking on the uh, name of the uh, assessment instrument there and it will take you to a page that will then show you what the different criterion is that you'll be marked on and what the different levels of performance there are. And there are descriptors there that will tell you what you need to do to achieve uh, each of the different performance levels. Up the top of the screen, there is a return button. If you click on that return button, it will take you back to the uh, portfolio screen so that you can then go through and add your content. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, going to show you how to add some content onto the About Me page. So there are lots of different ways you can add content in the portfolio. Um, I am going to show you uh, all the different examples of content that you may be needed, uh, you may want to add into your uh, employability award. So basically I'm going to start with what we call a text block. So to add a text block, you go up to the add content button at the top of the screen, you click that add content, and then you can select text block from the menu there. You'll then be presented on the screen with a what you see is what you get text block editor, which you can then go and then put in your content into. So I'm going to add in some content that I've already got pre-organized. So with this uh, content that I've just pasted in here, you can pay, copy and paste information from Word or something if you prefer to type in Word. If you do add in any hyperlinks to um, websites like URLs, just remember you will need to hit the little chain link icon that says insert slash edit link in order to add that URL in as a clickable link. So you just paste the URL into that URL section and then it will turn it into a clickable hyperlink. With the formatting, you can uh, do lots of different formatting. There are headers, so you can change the um, font uh, into different sizes. You can change the font types. There are a number of different font types. You have your general bold italics. You can move the text to the center, to the right. Um, you can add tables, you can insert images. Um, so there's quite a lot of uh, stuff that you can place into that text block. The main thing to remember is when you've added content to a text block that there is a save button. You need to click on that save button in order for that work to be saved. 
once you're finished, you can hit the close button and the text box, the te text block will close. And then you can see how the text block appears on the page. If you do want to edit that text block, you can click on the cog icon located next to that text block. And then you do have the option there to edit. There is also an option to delete, which will then remove that text block from your page. If you do go in and edit the text block, remember you do have to hit that save button again to save any changes that you've made. So on this page, I'm also going to quickly show you how you can upload a video file as well. So the ePortfolio does allow for a vast range of file types to be uploaded. So on the About Me section, you are, at, you are able to put in a video. You can see here um, that the example that I've got uh, is from a student that's previously done the Employability Award. Their video has been uploaded to YouTube but you can actually just attach your video straight directly into the ePortfolio. So you can add a video by going up to add content. You go into add file. You tell the page where you would like to place the video. So you just click on the insert content here. You'll then be presented with a file upload window where you can either drag and drop your file into the gray boxed area you can log in to either Dropbox or OneDrive, or you can browse your computer by clicking on add files. Now there is a file size limit. The file size limit is 500 megabytes. That is for individual files. So each individual file can only be a maximum of 500 megabytes. You can add unlimited files to your portfolio. So I'm just going to add in a video. So the main thing to remember with video files is that because they are large files, generally they do take time to upload to um, the system. And if your internet is a bit slow, especially if you're at home, it may take a while to upload a video. Um, Generally, it's quicker to upload video content while you're on campus because the internet speed is a little bit quicker. Um, so just bear that in mind if you are uploading a video, it can take some time. Basically, once you've attached it, you need to hit the start upload button. When the file has been accepted, it's gone through its virus scanning, you'll get a little tick next to the file. You do have to wait for that tick to appear next to the file before you can close the uh, window for uploading. So you hit that close button. You'll notice that the video file is currently being converted. So what it is doing, it is taking the uh, raw video and turning it into a streamable video. So it does a similar process to like what YouTube does. It will change it to um, into a streamable video. So while the system is doing that, you don't need to stay on the page. You can close out and come back later, or you can go through and keep adding content to the rest of your portfolio. But eventually, once it's finished converting the video, it will appear on the page as a black box with a little play icon in the middle of it. So what you do is you can click on that play button and then the video will then stream like a YouTube video. Okay, so we're going to go through and have a look at some of the other pages now. So if you click on the little book icon that was in the top left corner, that will take you back to the table of contents. You can then go on to the next section that you need to complete, which is the resume. So with the resume, you could choose to type it directly in via text blocks, or you could just choose to upload a file uh, directly. So again, to add a file, we go add content, we click on add file, we choose the file that we want to upload. So I attach my resume, I hit the upload button, I click on close, and then my resume is sitting on the page there. 
It does have Turnitin built into the system, so you can click on that check originality button and it will send your file to Turnitin to um, have a text matching report generated. Um, obviously, it's not very handy for your resume. You then need to move on to your statement of claims. With your statement of claims, there are four different statement of claim pages. So you just go through and you click on those pages. And again, you add your content to those pages. Um, in the example that I've got, I've got some text that I'm going to put in on my page. So I'm going to put my text in a text block. And then I've also got a supporting picture to add in as well. So I'm going to add in a picture. So I'm adding my file. And then once I've added my picture, the picture will then appear on the page. Now with the content, if I wanted to move my picture on the page, so I can mouse over to the left-hand side of the picture and you'll get a four-headed arrow. You can then click on that four-headed arrow and you can drag it up and it will actually move where that picture appears on the page. So you can place the content in what order you want. You just need to move it around on the page. I'm just going to repeat and I'm just going to add some more content for my second example. Now when you add files, you also, you don't, um, you're not only restricted to just adding files by dragging and dropping and um, browsing your computer, there's also if you can access files from your file library. So next to the add file, there's a tab that says file from library. You can click on that and it will then take you into your file library where you can view any files that you've already previously uploaded into the portfolio. So then you can just select one of those files. You click add selected and click done and it will automatically place that file onto the page. Your file library is actually located in the menu on the left hand side. So you can click into menu. You can go into the work section and you'll find there's a file library there. You can go in and put files in without actually going into a page on the portfolio. So once you've finished adding all your content into uh, your portfolio, you may wish to then change the look of your portfolio. So up the top right hand side, there is a preview button. If you click on that preview button, it will take you into a new tab and it will show you what your portfolio looks like in its current state. So what the table of contents does is build a um, navigation menu for a website. So basically what you're doing as you're adding content is you're actually building a website and the website, uh, the table of contents uh, becomes the menu for navigating the website. So you can see here over on the left hand side of the screen, I can click through the different pages and then it will show me what's on each of those pages. Now you can edit the look of your portfolio. There is a setup section. If you click on that setup, there's an edit setup button. This will take you through to uh, some of the themes that the vendor has provided. So there are some default themes that are provided by the vendor that will change the look of your portfolio. So you can select a theme, you click save. You can then close out of that, go back into preview and it will change the look of your portfolio. So those are just the, the uh, inbuilt themes that are provided by the vendor. There is also a theme builder where you can then go through and you can customize the, the look of your portfolio and build um, 
different themes for your portfolios. Um, you just go through, you can change uh, lots of different settings and it will change the look of your portfolio. The main thing to remember when you've done that is um, to save your theme by clicking on the save button at the top. So you also have the options um, that you can actually share your portfolios with people as well. So sharing your portfolio is different to submitting your work through to the employability team for them to review it. Sharing your portfolio is simple as going down to the sharing section. There's a share this page button. You click on that button. You then get a little menu that comes down and it will ask you what you would like to share. So there's a drop down box that will then allow you to choose how much of your portfolio you would like to share. So you can choose to share your entire portfolio of work. You can do pages and any of the sub pages. So pages and sub pages. So if you look at the statement of claim there, that's a page. And then the ones that are underneath the statement of claim one, two, three, four, they're sub pages. So you could choose just to uh, share that section or you can choose to share just individual pages only. There's the option to turn on allow commenting. So people that you share it with can leave comments on your portfolio so they could give you feedback. There are secu optional security settings, which include um, a password or an expiration date. So you can put a password on your, um, your share link or an expiration date so that after a certain time that that link will no longer work. But once you're ready, uh, you hit that generate share URL button and it will then generate a URL for you, which you can then copy and paste and put into um, documents um, or send that out. There are also buttons at the bottom where you can send via email, you can add it to Twitter, into Facebook or straight into your LinkedIn account. Um, so that will. Um, so that question was in regards to how long does the URL last? It will be. Um, so when you finish being a student, you can still share portfolios um, up until the point that your um, account gets archived. So that's after the four years of your account expiry. Okay, so the final thing I'm going to um, show you in this section is how to submit your work through for review. So what you need to do once you've added all your content onto the various pages, you need to go back to the About Me page. So you click on the About Me page. You then have a green Submit button on the right-hand side of the screen. You're going to click on that. The first stage of submission will be to submit the um, employability award ePortfolio section. So what you do is you select the little checkbox next to the ePortfolio. You hit the continue button. You'll then be asked who the work will be submitted to at the employability center. So it is going to be submitted to Sarah. So basically all you have to do is start typing in Sarah's name and the system will then go and find her for you. So once her name is found, you can select it underneath there, you click on it, her name will appear on underneath. You can then hit the submit button. Biggest thing to remember is after you've hit that submit button is to click on this review submission button so that you can make sure that all the content is appearing as you intended it to appear. It is your one chance to actually see what the marker is going to see before you close out. Um, so just make sure you click through the different pages to make sure it's appearing how you wanted it to appear. Once you're finished, you can click the little uh, return arrow at the top there and it will take you back to the submitted content screen. You click on that close button and it will take you back and it will then show on the right hand side that you have a submission made against the 
uh, UQ Employability Award ePortfolio. Now with this submission that you make, all that it is doing is sending a snapshot of what the, um, your portfolio looked like at the exact date and time you hit that submit button. So if you do notice a mistake when you go in and review that work, you can't actually just make changes on the page and um, have it update automatically because it's not how it works. All it does, um, so what the marker will see is exactly what it looked like when you hit that submit button. So if you do notice that you um, have made a mistake and you need to fix it up, what you need to do is actually withdraw your submission. So you go over to the right hand side where the date stamp is, you click on that date stamp and then from the menu, there is the option to withdraw. You click on the withdraw button. We'll then say that your assessment has been withdrawn. You hit the return button. You then will see that it's now changed over to not submitted on the right hand side there. You can then make any changes you need and then you submit your work again so that it can be marked. That way it will then include any updates that you make. Basically, what happens is that people outside, um, so markers, anyone that is going to go in and review your work, doesn't have access to anything that you do in your portfolio. It is your own personal space. Nobody else has access to it. So the only time other people can see it is if you share that URL or you've hit that submit button so that the uh, person that's reviewing can go in and look at your work. Now, basically, once um, the ePortfolio section has been reviewed and they, um, they're happy with what you've provided, you would then need to then submit your interview section for the interview. So again, that one there is, there's an interview um, one. You would just click the checkbox next to the interview and do the exact same process. You would hit that continue button type in Sarah's name, it will get sent through to her and then it will be ready for the interview stage. Now, once you've submitted your portfolio for review, you may be asked um, for some additional information. So you may receive a resubmission request from um, someone that uh, the person that's reviewed your work at the employability team. So I'm just going to show you what happens uh, in that regard. So I've changed over to a, one of my other test students here. Now on the right hand side of my screen, you can see that under the employability award for the portfolio that I've had a resubmission required. So what I can do here is there's a date stamp underneath. You can click on that date stamp and you can view the summary of what feedback has been provided. So basically um, when I click on that summary, it's telling me that I'm missing information on my statement of claims uh, three and four. Can I please add the content and then submit again for review? So basically all I need to do then, I can hit the update work and resubmit. So it'll take me through, I go through, I can add my content on the other pages. So I'll just add in a picture from my file library. and add on something on this page. And then what you do is you just go up to the submit button, you hit that submit button, you select that you're um, completing the resubmit. So you select that little 
checkbox next to the uh, first line there that says ePortfolio and you can see it says resubmit. And then all you do is you hit that continue button and then you hit the submit button. It will then send it back automatically to the person that um, has reviewed your work and then they can go in and see the changes that you've made. So that may occur um, during your early stages of submitting your um, portfolio of work if there are some improvements that need to be made. Now, if you do encounter any problems while using the portfolio, so if you do, um, if you can't remember anything that we've covered here in the training, you can go to the library, ask us at the library. Um, Though the staff there are trained in the student side of the portfolio, so they can then assist you with um, adding content into your portfolio um, and they can assist you with the submission process as well. Probably the easiest thing to do would just be to go back and watch this video that um, of this session today because it's actually specific to what uh, the employability award will require you to do. Are there any questions at all? Where is the resubmit button? So um, if you are requested to do a resubmit, so when you hit the uh, green submit button at the top there, and then you select the um, one that's been requested for resubmit, so the ePortfolio one, it will then automatically, you, so you hit continue and you hit the submit button and it automatically sends it back. You don't have to type in the person's name. Yeah, so because it will automatically send it straight back to the person that marked your work. Yeah. It's okay. Any other questions?